Hey guys, I've been meaning to this video for quite a long time now and I'm finally getting around to it and that is a updated tutorial on how to use Apollo Upload Client. So they made a change a little while ago on how they do it and uh, I quite like how you use it now. And if you haven't heard of this library, what it allows you to do is send or upload uh, images or files to your GraphQL server. So now you don't have to create, for example, another endpoint that is a regular REST endpoint, or now you don't have to upload things to S3, you could just use this instead. So we're gonna take a look at how to use this. So let's jump into what it looks like on the front end, and uh, then we're gonna look at the back end. So here is, uh, and I tried to make this as minimal as possible, so you can check out just exactly how the upload link, or upload, uh, Apollo upload works. So you'll notice we are creating a, uh, using this function called create upload link. And that is pretty much the only thing we use from the Apollo upload client library. And then what we do is we use this link instead of, for example, an HTTP link, which you would normally use when setting up an Apollo client. Now, there is Apollo Boost now, but you cannot use that with Apollo Boost. Anytime you want to use like a custom link, so this is a custom link that we're getting from this place, you're going to have to use the Apollo client like this. And when you're using the Apollo client like this, you also have to specify your cache. So here we're using a in-memory cache. So this stuff right here is just initializing uh, Apollo. So we can actually send a, a GraphQL requests, and then this allows us to also send files as well. And then we just have our Apollo provider, which is normal, which we wrap our entire app and pass the client in. So this should look super familiar if you've used Apollo before. The only difference is you, how you create this link. Uh, you're using the uh, create upload link. And by the way, you can still concat things if you need middleware or afterware um, in your Apollo link. All right, so let's take a look at what app does. So one of my favorite libraries for uh, handling files, at least in React, is called React Drop Zone. So that is this guy right here. And uh, what it allows you to do is just very simply have a drag and drop um, little, kind of like a little pop-up that you can add. Um, and we'll see in a second, not necessarily a pop-up, but like a little box thing here that I can drag files into or I can just click. Um, and it'll open up. So this is what drop zone looks like. So that is what this component is, and I'm using it with React, uh, importing that with React drop zone. And uh, that's how we're able to um, get an instance of a file. Because whenever someone adds a file, uh, this on drop is called. And now they can upload uh, more than one file. So you'll notice I'm just looking at the very first file. That's what that's doing. I'm destructuring the array, getting the first file in that array, and then calling mutate on it. And you'll notice I am using a uh, different syntax, the uh, rendered prop from uh, React Apollo. So this is the newest uh, way to do mutations. And I wrap this whole thing in a mutation, pass in uh, the mutation that I'd like to happen and the mutation that I'd like to happen is over here. So this upload file mutation. Now this looks pretty normal if you've done uh, GraphQL stuff before. The only difference is you'll notice my variable is of type upload. So uh, this is uh, what allows you to uh, upload files. And we're just gonna pass that as a variable. So this is our file object, we're gonna mutate, and as a variable we're gonna pass in that file and the name should match up with the variable that we have in our uh, GraphQL statement right here. And so we pass that and then the mutation we're running is upload file. And I'll show you the schema and stuff uh, in just a second. And then again, here's us using just a rendered prop and here we uh, have our function, which is mutate and that's where mutate is coming from to call right there. All right, so that's pretty much all that's really happening on the front end. So whenever a person now uh, adds a file, this function here is gonna be called. And we're gonna grab the first file, then we're going to mutate, passing in the file as a variable, and then this is gonna send a GraphQL request to our server, um, and this is gonna be a mutation. We're gonna be running the upload file mutation. And so what I'm gonna look at, show you next, is how we set up the server to be able to handle this mutation. Okay. 
So here it is. And you'll notice that I am using a GraphQL Yoga. So the nice thing about this is it already comes set up with Apollo Upload Server. Now, let's say you're not using GraphQL Yoga. I'll show you um, what you can do. So here's Apollo Upload Server. This is basically the companion to the client. And you can add some middleware. So uh, they have, looks like they have middleware for Koa and also Express. So you can add that, or here's some custom middleware for other things. So you're gonna just add that, and it's very simple to add that. You just do that, and I guess you pass any other any options that you want. Uh, but GraphQL Yoga already does that for us, so we don't need to worry about it. And here you notice we have our type defs. Here's our schema. So the one interesting bit is you need to make sure you add this uh, scaler uh, called upload, and this is something that uh, GraphQL Yoga already handles for us, and under the hood. That is what Apollo Upload Server does. And then here's where, and you'll notice that matches the expected type over here in our mutation. Okay, so here's our mutation. Um, I'm expecting to get a file as an argument, and then I'm just returning true or false whether I was able to successfully upload it. Um, we'll talk about this guy in a second. Um, at the very bottom, we'll see I'm just starting up my GraphQL server, nothing special happening here. But let's take a look at what the resolver looks like for upload file. So the first argument, or really the only argument, is file. And what is this file op thing, right? Well, it's of the type upload. And uh, basically, it's an object that is, uh, we can await it and get a streamable uh, file from it. And we can also get the file name of the file. And there's this lovely function that comes from GraphQL Yoga, one of their examples called store upload where we can pass their pass in a stream uh, and a file name and here we're basically just calling create write stream and this is from the file system and this is a node package um, that's built into node so if we look at package.json my only dependency is graphql yoga so this is built in with node um, but what this thing does right here is actually just save the file to my computer so we have a new promise and we're going to resolve or reject this. This is so we can make this asynchronous and that we can await it and know when we're finished with it. So we take that stream that we get passed in and we're piping all the data and then we're just writing it to this file. So whatever we put, this is gonna be a string and whatever we call that, that's the name of the uh, file we're gonna to save to our computer. So we can use the file name that we're given or if we wanted to, we could just append like maybe a random code at the end um, and then .png or something uh, oops, like that. Or you can do pretty much whatever you want there. And then here we just wait for it to finish or to error out. If it errors, we reject. Um, if it finishes, it resolves. And we can actually, we probably don't have to have a lambda like that. We could just do it like this. But anyway, that's how that's working. Um, so we just store the upload after we get it, and that's pretty much all there is to handling files uh, on the server side. So again, just to recap, we get the file argument, we get the streamable and the file name, we just pass that to this little function that we made called store upload, and what store upload does is it takes the stream and writes it to our computer, and then it uses that file name. So let's see this in action now. So uh, I'm about to upload a file, and before we start, take note, here are the files over here. I don't know if you can see them, but right now I have no PNGs or anything. Um, and I'm just gonna upload my Timo image. And I didn't really add anything like, hey, it worked, so we're just gonna come over to our server, and we can see there's now a Timo that was saved. And I can click on it, and sure enough, we see our image did upload to our server. So awesome. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope that gives you a better idea of how to use Apollo Upload Client, and now you can handle any kind of uh, files being uploaded to your server. And uh, again, you don't have to just have one argument of file. You might take other things also in your mutation. And I could take multiple files um, as well, or you can do a list of files. There's lots of cool stuff you can do with this. Um, it's actually very handy. Um, and all the code for this is on GitHub. Uh, 
and as you can see it's very simple the back end so it should be pretty easy to understand so if you want to check it out the links are in the description below